you've come to the right place. If you're looking to create, launch, and scale a high value online training program. I'm your guide, Chris Badgett. I'm the co-founder of Lifter LMS, the most powerful learning management system for WordPress. Stay to the end. I've got something special for you. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome back to another episode of LMS Cast. I'm joined by a special guest. Her name is Juliana Mayer from Supapass, which is an easy way to make mobile apps and it's also a website builder. Welcome to the show, Juliana. Hey, Chris. I'm really excited to get into it with you. Um, we get asked a lot over in the WordPress world and the LMS world, the course creation world about uh, how to build a mobile app. And I see a lot of people go down the, the rabbit hole and they just end up getting stuck or they, they do some research and find a mobile app developer and it's going to be over six figures to develop. You found an easier way to make that happen. Can you uh, take us to school on, on, on creating mobile apps the easy way? Absolutely. So, so yeah, so we're really excited that we're basically been able to be a game changer for a lot of course creators and content creators and entrepreneurs who prior to finding out about Superpass basically couldn't afford to have their own app. And we do actually even have some customers that actually did spend, you know, hundreds of thousands building their own technology and then realizing that there was still a whole bunch of features they needed and that maintaining it's really expensive. And they actually then threw it all away and came to us because what we've built is better than, than what, you know, cost them hundreds of thousands. So it really is a complete game changer for people. And, and basically what we've done is it's so affordable that it's basically less, it will cost you less than, you know, some of the pricing tiers on Kajabi or Teachable or, you know, some of the SaaS uh, e-learning platforms. But with us, you literally have your own mobile app that out the box looks and feels like Netflix, Amazon Prime or Spotify. Um, and also the other thing for um, content creators listening is that it's not just for course creators, it's for really any content that you're making. So, it, you know, if you've got a podcast, it can also have your podcast in there. If you've got music, if you've got an audiobook, if you've got blogs and articles, you can literally have all your content together. You can build a community there. You can have a paywall, you can have a subscription. You can do patron donations, but you keep 100% of all the money. There's no rev share. It's literally, it's your platform. So that's really kind of key to kind of, I guess why I founded the company was to give creators and entrepreneurs complete control and complete ownership of everything in a way that they can't get on those third-party platforms and social media and streaming platforms, but where it's yours and it's your brand, it's all branded on your as yours. It's, you know, you search for your name in the app store or you go to your custom domain on you know website and it's all there but you haven't had to mess about with coding or plugins or software updates or any of that it's just made for you the same way as if you create a facebook group it's made for you but it's your brand wow that is awesome well <laughs> i get asked a lot about mobile apps but i'm not a real mobile app expert so i'm going to pretend like i'm a prospective <laughs> customer for you because i get these questions all the time uh, the first one, so I have a lot of little questions just around the process and how awesome. it works. The first one is, does this work with like Apple and Google Google uh, apps or is it like, it, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's a native build. So sometimes when you, when you buy apps from a company, it'll be cross-platform, which means that basically it's built in one code base that then is distributed across both. But the, the user experience in those is often feels more, it feels more like a website experience rather than an app experience. Whereas what we've built, it, they're both completely different stacks where they've built natively. So we've built an iOS native app, which is, and we've got two apps. There's one for iPhone and one for, for iPad. And then you've got the Android native app, which is, you know, then specifically for, for the, the Android stack. And it means that it uses all of that beautiful native functionality. The audio player, you know, looks like a beautiful player that you'd get on something like Spotify. Um, you've got really great functionality like push notifications and things like that. So every time you've got, you know, a new video or a new podcast episode that comes out, you can send a push notification automatically that says, you know, the, the latest content is up or you can send custom ones, you know, saying, oh, let's all hop into Zoom now <laughs> or like whatever it is that you're doing. It just makes that re um, really easy to engage your your audience and your students or, you know, wh whoever your, your audience consists of, bring them all into one place in a really engaging way that cuts through the noise. That's cool. And 
and getting set up on Superpass, um, is there a uh, like what's is it a Superpass app or do like if I'm your customer or is it my account on the App Store or whatever? It's yours. Yeah, it's yours. So you know, let's say that you wanted a Lyft LMS app, <laughs> yeah. then, you know, you would register with a, an, an account, a developer account with Apple App Store and Google Play Store. And then we would do all the, the build. So basically you'd, you'd sign up with Superpass, you'd have your Superpass dashboard. You control absolutely everything from that dashboard. So, you know, upload all your courses there. You'd, uh, you can pull in the, your podcast automatically through the RSS. So if you've got a podcast, you actually can create, and actually it's quite interesting hearing your chat that you had a couple of episodes ago um uh, who was it with um about uh, podcasting yeah it was with um oh it was um the, about the divi addicts podcast oh yeah 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 Keegan and, and you know yeah. yeah and he was saying oh you know it's too much effort to create a website for the podcast but actually with this literally within two minutes you can have a beautiful podcast website that automatically pulls in all and he was saying like each time he has he's got a plug in and each time he has to go and spend two minutes approving the episode this it literally just you know it automatically pulls in the episode and publishes it each time sends out the email notifications push notifications post to social media all that stuff literally out the box anyway I, I digress from your original question which was so you basically from the dashboard you can you know create all that stuff and then with the app itself this is pretty much a form within the dashboard that you fill out, which includes things like what is the app store copy? You know, what keywords and categories do you want? Is there an age restriction for the app? But that, that form takes about three minutes. Like obviously if you have to like think about what the marketing message is, that's going to take you longer. But if you already know what that is, literally just fill out that form, takes you three minutes, press build. And that's it. That's literally it. We do all of the rest of the magic behind the scenes so then we go and we um create the builds we create all the screenshots for anyone that has built apps before you'll be familiar with the fact that you know you have to create screenshots for every single device you know like five to ten screenshots for every single device that's out there you multiply that you end up having to do 300 600 screenshots for every single app release you know for every time you do an update um, but we all do all of that for you so you're just not having to worry about any of these technical things which you know normally is, is such a barrier when people want to make an app um, you literally don't have to worry about those things with us. You go through the Apple or Google Play Store review process, and then your app is published. And then from there, the other thing that we do once it's live in the store is we constantly update the app. So every year, Apple brings out a new OS, you know, iOS um, update, which means that, and usually they deprecates previous things so you know if you've got your own app that you've built yourself you've got to then invest time basically upgrading it and rewriting bits of it to work with the new um, devices and operating systems but with us you literally just don't have to think about any of that actually probably a lot of our customers don't even know we're literally doing that every year all the time we'll do all of that for you you just don't need to think about it we're constantly adding new features so our clients will often just be like oh my gosh now I can do this other thing that I didn't even know was coming and it's just there it's released it's just added to the suite of tools that you get to enjoy so we really do aim to take all the pain points away make it really really easy um, and probably the most complicated bit is actually just creating your developer account in the first place because you know with Apple you have to kind of prove who you are and things like that like honestly that is for us the most frustrating stage because we can't make that simpler yeah and you're but giving the, rest, the power to the person it's your account yeah. it's your app yeah, exactly. so you got to set up the thing right yeah, well yeah exactly so we want to give you all the control but unfortunately we, we can't just create the account for you but we can do everything else and we do and um and then also having your own um apple google play store account that means that you can then see all the app downloads, see, you know, the territories, any in-app purchases that you have, you can see all of that money and you get paid that money directly. So all of, you know, you, you basically have control of everything apart from we take care of the tech for you. Um, so yeah, just, and we're, we're constantly doing more to make it even simpler and to bring down the price even more. Cause my, my, basically my mission and my aim is to enable any content maker on the planet to be able to have that kind of level of technology that Netflix or Spotify can offer your audiences, most individual content creators can't afford that kind of content experience for your audience. And that's what I think, I wanna level that playing field. I want us to enable anyone to have, give that kind of experience, but in an affordable way that they don't have to, you know, go through all the pain and that it's as affordable as, 
you know, building something on Wix or Squarespace or WordPress or wherever people currently build websites, they can actually have their own mobile app and their own website out the box for those same kind of price points. That's awesome. Well, uh, <laughs> Michael Wiley is getting excited in the Facebook group. Awesome. If you have any questions, hey, for, Michael. Uh, we, we are broadcasting the recording of this live. So if anybody's watching this, feel free to drop a question in the chat. But um, let's talk about timeline. Let's say I have a bunch of like materials together, like some video files, audios. I just kind of know what I want my app to do. Mm -hmm. And I've got the content. Um, how long from that moment to having my, my, uh, app is live in the app stores. So the answer to that question, most of the time depends on you. So yeah. I'll give you an example. So we made an app, um, for PodFest, which, um, they actually got Guinness world record for that conference for the most, um, the most podcasters to attend a virtual conference. So this was last August Okay. and the conference finished on the Friday and on Monday morning. So, so they, it was about 500 half an hour sessions that they'd had um so these 500 um video sessions and on the monday morning we started uploading all of that creating the apps at nine o'clock in the morning by two o'clock we'd uploaded all 500 videos all curated set up all the price points and products and um, created the build and submitted the builds to the app store by two o'clock that same day so when you have got absolutely everything ready and you know exactly what you want it to to be and do it is possible to literally create it in 24 hours then after submitting it to the app stores it can take um particularly apple more than google it can take like a week for them to approve it through the app store but i mean sometimes they can turn it around in 24 to 48 hours so it does just depend very rarely it can take even longer than a week if they you know if there's some kind of copyright that they need you to prove that you're particularly if you're a big influencer you might need to prove legally that you are who you say you are so the app stores can take a bit longer, but on our side, it can literally be done within a day. I would say that that's not normal, though. I think most of the time what we see is that people aren't quite ready with absolutely everything yeah. when they sign up. Um, so quite often what people will do is they'll sign up, they'll get the initial, um, you know, the, the, the homepage landing page for the website and the podcast in and, you know, other things that usually w will even for people that don't necessarily know what else they're doing for the rest of stuff that usually happens in the first 10 10, 20 minutes anyway. So that can go live straight away, even if you're not organized with the other stuff. And then the other stuff, it, it just depends. Um, but like we are talking a matter of hours, one, you know, once you have everything. That's cool. Um, what about, I, I, I'm not sure how it technically works, but what if I want to have like, let's say it's like a private app that I've already got these existing customers mm -hmm. Uh, how do I, is that possible to do with Superpass? Absolutely. Yeah. So we work with, with loads of um, entrepreneurs who already have a really cool um, ecosystem, whether it's, you know, a community on Discord or courses on um, Udemy or, you know, whatever it might be. There's, there's so many different kinds of examples that we have where they then want to add the app as well. And so it's very, very easy to invite all of those existing customers in where they're not having, so let's say you set up, so you've got a course and it's on your website and, you know, so you're, you know, you, you've got your, your Lyft LMS course um, and then you want to get all of those students into your app as well. So but not the general your, public. Yeah. And not the general public. Exactly. So no. you may want to sort of also have the app, you know, if new people come along want to buy the course, that they could do that within the app from the app give, side. Yeah. On the app side, you, you know, cool. if, if you wanted, but then all the, all your students that already have enrolled, they've already paid. You literally can just, we can generate a unique link for each of them. And then you just send that link to each student. They click it. It automatically redeems their access. It can't that, you know, that link is, is unique to them. It can't be then, you know, reused and then they've got access and that can be for, and you can, you can really con control on a really granular level what you're giving them access to. So let's say they bought 10 different courses with that one link, they can then have instant access to all 10 of that content. If you maybe wanted to create a kind of secret space that no one else can see and just that cohort, of, you know, that, that group of users can see, then you can do that too. So you can have a unique link that's just specifically to that secret space. Um, one thing that seems to be quite popular is, you know, people are doing a lot of kind of, uh, you know, Zoom sessions or webinars with a group of um, students that they're training. And then you probably don't want to share that 
on a website that other people could then ever access that video, even if they were paying. So you probably want to then just share that recording with the people that were part of that session, particularly if it was an interactive session. So you can just create a space, a secret space, just for the people that attended, or maybe it's a weekly thing. So you do it across all the videos that they attend. Um, and then you just give them access. And then every time you have another session with that group, you can just then upload that and give them access. So it's a really, really nice way to granularly control private content, paid content. You can also have free content, but that has an email gateway, which is a great, you know, lead magnet and a way to grow your email list. And you can also have free content if you want to have people just, you know, come, come straight there, play stuff, find out more about what you're doing. So we find that people tend to use all four different kinds of, of access types across different content as well. You can have infinite permutations. Um, so it's a really nice way to curate everything. That's cool. What about, uh, let's say we sell annual subscriptions to our website and we, uh, somebody churns, can we, uh, can we remove somebody off of the, that we gave the, the unique link to, to get access? Can we kick them out of the premium stuff? Yes. Yeah, exactly. So, you, so you'll be able to control all of that. We also do, um, a route the other direction. So if people have signed up through the app, um, and let's say you're then, um, connecting their details through to your CRM, like maybe it's your, um, you know, like you're using MailChimp or something to, to send regular emails to everyone. And you only want those emails to go to the people that are actually subscribed. If they then unsubscribe, then we'll actually automatically update MailChimp to know, okay, these, this user is no longer subscribed to that. So, um, going from our system out, it's automated, but the other way around, if, you know, if you had a system that, you know, then that person's not subscribed, you can just go into the dashboard and say, okay, let, let's remove access for that person. That's cool. And that, that thing to MailChimp, is that like an integration or a Zapier or what is that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a Zapier. Oh, so you have, Zap, you have Zapier. Yeah, yeah. So you have Zapier integration to, you know, whatever CRM you're using. You can also post out automatically to social media whenever there's a new piece of content. So there's loads of different ways that you can integrate with your existing system. Cool. And Michael <laughs> had a question related to this, just about how they work together. But I think Zapier is, is kind of answering that. Uh, but a question around video specifically, uh, when you're doing an app and you're working with video, let's say we have a, a WordPress site that has Vimeo videos on it. Mm -hmm. Do you actually upload videos to the app or do you put your embed your Vimeo pro links or whatever in there? Or could so, you do both? So, it, so the majority of our clients will upload stuff directly. So we do include video hosting. So you won't, cause that gives the best content experience. You know, then people can just come in and all the players work beautifully both on the web and in the apps. Um, so that's what most of our customers choose to do. Um, you can also, if you've got a lot of stuff on YouTube, you can actually just have those show directly. Um, it's not really an embed. It's more that you, you, you kind of put the link into the, into the dashboard and then it will still curate it into beautiful categories and collections in the same way as the other videos. So it, it's a really nice cohesive experience across all your content. We actually don't support Vimeo at the moment, but um, you know, if we had a lot of people that wanted that, it would be quite easy to add it. But, but yeah, at the moment we just like people basically are really happy to upload directly or in the case of YouTube, I guess it's the only time they'll kind of share some existing stuff within it. Yeah. Native video makes sense is really being the best. Yeah. What, what about, um, uh, I'm giving you all the hard questions I get. And I, I like, I like good questions. I love these questions. Chris. <laughs> so uh, what about offline? Like what if I have up video content, but then I get on a plane with no internet or whatever, what happens there? Cool. So at the moment we have offline for audio, so you can. Um, so is that know, like you, a download option within the. Yeah, exactly. So you can download everything to, to offline so that then you can you know, listen when you're on a plane or <laughs> underground. Uh, we don't currently have that for video, but it's on our roadmap for this year. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Um, what are some ideas? I mean, there's videos, there's audios. What else can people put? Like, what have you seen somebody who's just some kind of subject matter expert and whatever it is, yoga, business, health, whatever, like what kind of stuff can we put inside of an app? Anything, anything you make, <laughs> anything that's video streaming, audio streaming, written content. Yeah, I mean, we we have the most wonderful entrepreneurs that we work with across course creation, podcasting, music, TV and film, charities, conferences, membership organizations, through to like local councils and uh, like care homes and um, like massive, like like and chamber of commerce business like so many different things. It's, it's really cool that, um, 
Yeah, it's like these days most businesses have content and even for for bigger organizations, it's really like annoying. It's the, you know, it's a pain to sort of work out, well, where is all this content going to live? Because the thing is for most, you know, and, and I guess I'm talking about like bigger organizations rather than like specific content is like a course creator or a podcaster, obviously the content is the business. But if I, we're talking about big organizations that have a website that needs to also have content, quite often, if you just have like six or 10 videos or something, it's really easy to add that. But if actually you've got an archive of a hundred video resources or, you know, and in some cases we end up having clients with thousands of different um, resources, that's really hard to create with a really nice user experience, you know, to have a really nice design in UX that is intuitive for users to find what they're looking for. That's not easy to do. And that's really the kind of pain point that we really solve for people is they don't have to hire a designer or a developer or, you know, have any of the expertise. We've literally figured that out for you. And within that first, you know, whether it's the 10 minutes or the few hours, depending on how much content you've got, you don't have to think about the build or the design or the layout because that comes out the box and we call it the smart builder and it basically will make it look like Netflix for you just by uploading. That is cool. Well, if somebody's listening to this or watching on YouTube, what's the, how should somebody who's more familiar with building websites like with WordPress and just thinking about websites, how should somebody think about uh, app building? Is it, just kind of like a website that's really skinny or any, any like kind of ways for people to think about approaching an app that come from a website building background? So I guess, um, so with us, there's kind of two different ways that people use what we're doing. So sometimes we'll have people that already have an incredible website that has everything on. And really what they're looking to do is add a mobile app. And in that case, it's really easy to just, you know, cr create all of that and then, they, they won't really be using kind of the website part of what we're doing. And then we'll have others who have a great website to like showcase their business and stuff, but they don't really have a content or members area as part of it. So they'll then use both the, um, the mobile app side of what we're doing and also the, the website, but the website will be like a subdomain of their main website. So they'll have their website as their like shop window for everything and showcasing their services. And then they'll have a subdomain, which is basically their content and members hub. And then we basically, are creating and hosting all of that side of it um, and then and then you'll have the, the, the I'd say probably about half our clients that literally replace their website with this and then have this for all of their everything so they're you know everything they want on their website all of their content all of their members area and the app and the, then the benefit there is that everything's controlled from one dashboard you upload a video once and it you know it's in both the app and the website and somebody registers either on the app or the website and they're registered in both and a comment they might write is shows in both and everything is synced. So in that sense, it's, um, it definitely saves people time, but some people absolutely love their website and then they just want to create a mobile app. And this is the easiest way, particularly if you've got more than videos, you know, if you've got a podcast or want to create one or have audio, uh, sorry, articles or, or a blog, there isn't really a better option than this for creating a mobile app across all of those different content types. You know, there's a few products out there. If you are just creating video, they tend to be a lot more expensive than what we're doing. But if you are looking to create, you know, an OTT video streaming service, there are other options out there. But if you also have a podcast or also have written content and things like that, there isn't really anyone that's offering what we're offering. Can you tell us a little bit about in-app purchases, like mm. how that works and, you know, what's, what are some examples? So, um, yeah, so within the app, you can have um, an in-app purchase. It could be, you know, a monthly subscription, a yearly subscription. The thing to always be aware of with in-app purchases is that Apple and Google like to take their cut. So it used to be 30% for everyone, but they've now launched. Um, so Apple launched the small business program in December and Google have just added their own now um, this summer, where now if you qualify for that, which I'm assuming most people listening would qualify for that, I think you have to have revenue under several million um, then the cut that they take is 15%, one, five, uh, percent instead of the 30%. So that's obviously a, a huge difference. Um, and yeah, and, and I guess, uh, Apple and Google sort of their stake over that, that revenue share is that they're saying customers who come to you through the app are their customers that they're directing there. But with our service, what you can do is if you do have the website as well, you know, people can actually subscribe 
to the different uh, you know content you're making within the website and then they can go to the app and log in there and still access the content in the app and they haven't had to buy an in-app purchase um, and and then that's kind of the reverse of what Apple and Google are saying because then you're saying well this was my customer I brought them to my website first and then I told them to go down download the app so I've brought you the customer <laughs> so it's kind of I guess it depends where do, where does the customer originate from to to whether Apple and Google kind of have a stake over that revenue. That is cool. And we got a question about storage. So if if I'm uploading videos directly into the app, is there a limit or do I need to, is there additional cost for storage or how do we think about our, our all our content ban, uh, size? So, so we do have, so, so, so for most uh, creators, it, it, it's like there's no limit because um, most people yeah, don't create like, like Netflix, right? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, <laughs> we do have some clients that would, they have thousands of content pieces. They will be in our enterprise tier and there are additional costs there that encompass that. But for, you know, for, for, for most solopreneurs, you know, you, you probably are dealing with a few hundred videos that's, that would all be included in our standard pricing. And if you did want to go over that, then there are bolt-on packages, which again, they're, they're really affordable. So I think it's like $50 for I think it's up to 20,000 um, um, HD minutes of streaming and half a million audio minutes. So like, like it's really affordable, even if you've got ridiculous amounts of content, but, um, but yeah, so for most people, the answer is there, were, there wouldn't be a limit that you'd notice, but yes, there are limits because transcoding and stuff like that does cost us quite a lot. So um, at some point we do need to pass that cost on if you're of that size. That makes sense. And uh, so it looks like you've, you've taken some inspiration from Netflix and Spotify. <laughs> like what, um, what are some of the features that you've been inspired by there? And yeah, like, uh, like if somebody's like thinking about creating their own version of Netflix or Spotify, like what kind of things could they look forward to in the feature set? So I guess the key things are really around the content discovery process. So everything's very, very image led, you know, it's really bright, bold images. We often sort of say to clients, particularly those that maybe don't have those images is really invest time in getting some really bright popping images, because that makes the whole experience through content discovery so much more enjoyable, intuitive. Like a video placeholder image kind of thing. Yeah. So like, if you look behind me, I'm yeah. sorry for those just listening to the podcast that can't see the image behind me, but, um, you know, all of the images behind me are really, really bright and bold. And every single place that you go to in the app to find content is led by what those images are. So rather than it just being like words and topic based, it's very image led. And I guess that's where we are quite different to a lot of the other kind of e-learning and, and LMS systems. Um, and that the way that you navigate around content is based on that kind of principle that you see in, in platforms like Amazon Prime or Netflix, where you'll have your categories, they'll kind of scroll along sideways and you can scroll down and you can, you know, with that kind of vertical and horizontal scrolling, you can very intuitively see what, you know, what area or topic you want to dive deeper into. And then you can click into that. And let's say each of those is a module, you can then click into it and then you'll have a module with a list of all your course videos, um, listed you know that th then, that, then that's a list but to get to each list it's in these beautiful kind of collections and categories that do scroll in that that really kind of native intuitive way so what we find so in the early days so just to give you a bit of kind of super fast history so we have been around about 10 years and when we started we were actually completely focused on music which is where the kind of the spotify uh you know, user experience and stuff comes in because we're very much focused on building an, an amazing audio streaming platform was, was really our, our roots. Um, and then in the early days of starting to have course creators come to us, we had some that were on the more kind of traditional, very kind of university structured kind of LMS systems. And they were on both that and us. And then they gave access to their students to both. And the feedback that they got from their students was overwhelmingly that they preferred this and particularly so that that very first client his students were actually um they were university students so he had he used us as a b2b deal to the university that gave access to that university to all ten thousand of their students in that one deal so it was all that kind of university age students and when they saw both they just absolutely intuitively just you know they instantly could find what they were looking for in the app whereas in the kind of more traditional kind of structure yeah, it's um, it's just it's just a different approach. Um, so I guess most LMS systems and course 
structures is more traditional, although I think things are changing now. I think in the last four to five years, things have changed quite a lot in that area. But we've always just been like, like one thing we don't do is if you want to like restrict what videos people can see next, we actually don't support that. We, we may add it, but what we always say to people is that like users always say, look, you know, people's attention is here and there. They don't necessarily want to have to be restricted of what they dive into next. And so we actually actively recommend doing it this way. And, and, you know, and basically it's never been a barrier for us. People always prefer that once they understand why that's good, but that, that, you know, there, there will be some course creators out there that will like, it's really important to them to just restrict whether people can, can, you know, move ahead in the course. So in that case, we'd probably need to build that feature for them. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, well, let's let's talk about, go back to your audio roots and talk about podcasting. I've been podcasting for seven years and I still don't understand how all this stuff, it's kind of complicated. <laughs> so if somebody is listening to this and they don't have a podcast yet, you mentioned earlier about like getting your RSS feed from your podcast. So when you have a podcast that's, you publish to like the Apple store and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Can somebody just create a podcast through Superpass only and it goes everywhere it needs to go? Or how does how does it how should a first time podcaster think about using Superpass? So most of the podcasters we work with already have a podcast. So they'll already have a podcast host. So that might be Libsyn or Buzzsprout or Anchor or Podbean or any of the awesome yeah. services out there for, for podcast hosting. The problem is we- when people are over there, there there's all kinds of other comp competing like shows you know <laughs> yeah well, well well that's exactly it so what we say is okay so instead of you having to to move from this in- ecosystem that you're really familiar with you could just within two minutes have a website with us that has that same podcast on our service that and we're basically just pulling it in through the rss feed so the same way that your podcast is on spotify or apple Podcasts or any of those other places where those are the player we basically turn your website and your app into a player for the podcast but unlike most other kind of tools out there for creating a podcast website one of the really frustrating things for people is you'll have a, a page or like it'll be a, a embedded plugin where they'll play the podcast and then they'll go look at a different page on your website and the podcast will stop playing yeah. whereas with the website we provide you've got an inbuilt audio player across the whole site. So it's a site-wide player. So they press play on your podcast and then they go and look at other things and go write some comments and go have a look at something else you've written somewhere else. And the player is just playing all the way through. So it's really, again, this comes from the music background of us being really a, a you know sh- streaming platform. We create your own streaming platform for you where your website becomes a beautiful player no matter where on your website they go. Um, so, so yeah, one thing we don't do yet is, um, you know, that if you are a new podcaster that you would just put your podcast on our dashboard and then that distributes everywhere else. We don't support podcast, uh, RSS distribution in that way, but what we do do is that, um, sorry, my phone's going, that's so terrible. I thought I'd I can't off. hear it. <laughs> oh, good. Excellent. <laughs> well, it, it's gone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, um, Oh, the, the, the thing that we do do is, is um, if you wanted to just have your podcast on your app or your website, so, you know, sometimes people want to do premium episodes or premium co- podcasts that you can do directly with us. So if you have certain episodes, you want to just upload straight to your Apple website. It's not for the public. It's like exactly. a private podcast. Yeah, exactly. So, and we've actually had a, a, a few podcasters that used to have their premium kind of patron supporters on Patreon or some of the other services like that. And because there's, you have RevShare there, you know, you lose some of your uh, donations from your supporters because you've got revenue share with us, the paywall, you literally keep hundred percent of anything you earn. So, and because they've now got their courses with us and their blogs with us and all the other things, they've actually moved those supporters over and now they're keeping hundred percent of that money. So you can pretty much do anything you want to do with subscriptions or membership or donations or, um, paid digital products and across any kind of content types, but you're not just getting it on your website. You're also getting the mobile app. Wow. That's amazing. And <laughs> for an incredible price, head on over to superpass.com. That's S U P A P A S S.com. Check it out. Check out their pricing. I know from having looked into mobile apps myself, I can't believe what you are <laughs> providing for this price. It's amazing. What What's the origin of the name, by the way, Superpass? Cool. So it's always been about um, your most engaged audience. So, you know, basically your super fans. Okay. So, you know, that top, top kind of one to 10% of your, your followers or your listeners or, you know, wh- whoever your audience is in the kind of wider sense, where do you send 
your most engaged audience and really what you know social media and youtube and things like that are brilliant for growing your reach but they're very noisy when it comes to catering for the needs of your really engaged audience and that's really what we've built this for is where do you send them in a way that there's not going to be lots of noise and distractions and they they'll never miss a post and they'll really be able to like you know get your attention and all those things that really those other platforms aren't you know aren't, aren't sufficient for their needs that's who this is for so it's always been for super fans and I guess with the kind of origins of it being a music background uh, you know it's all about kind of that VIP pass the backstage pass so that's kind of the super pass um, but it still you know really holds now for for what we're doing because it's all about turning your listeners or followers into paid paid customers. That was awesome and as we're wrapping up here, what was the origin story of this, uh, of Superpass? Where did it grow out of? Cool. So, um, so I basically, I, I was a musician. I was running my own label. Um, I mean, I've been making content and websites and stuff from since the nineties. So kind of very much come from that kind of DIY, just kind of work out how to do it kind of, kind of background. Um, and then it was about, well, we started 10 years ago, but it was about three years before that, that I thought, you know, micro subscriptions was really the, the way forward to enable independent creators to be able to afford to spend full time on making stuff rather than sort of it being a side hustle. And it was always about enabling that. Um, as a creator myself, I was kind of waiting three years for someone to do it. I thought, you know, this is, this is pretty obvious. Somebody's going to make this and after three years, no one was. And I thought, oh, all right, let's let's go for it and let's start it. So that was kind of where it started. And, and just to give context of what was happening 10 years ago. So this was um, when Netflix had only just started their subscription streaming service. They had been doing the DVD subscriptions, but this was when they just started subscription streaming. Uh, Spotify had just started in the US that summer as well. Um, and things like Patreon and those other platforms didn't even start for another three years after that. So, um, you know, this was really very much kind of going, okay, micro subscriptions is a way for individual creators to empower themselves to, you know, to, to earn a living and no one was doing it. And I'm so, so excited that now it, you know, it's mainstream. Everybody knows, yeah, subscriptions is everything. Micro subscriptions is everything. And it's, it's a mainstream market now. And it's really, but I feel like for the first few years, most of what I was doing was kind of going around telling people like, trying to convince them like why they should be thinking about subscriptions and like I'm so relieved I don't have to do that now because you know now it, it's kind of everybody's doing it and um and we've just kind of evolved through through all of the changes and I I've what I'm excited about at the moment is it feels like so we've kind of moved I always like kind of seeing where the gaps are and seeing what is missing um and you know I mean maybe that's why we're not as big as some of the other platforms and maybe it slowed us down but I guess I'm always kind of thinking of what what's the next thing and where's the next cutting edge opportunity um, and I feel what's really cool about what's happening now in the market is I feel like everything's converged everybody understands why it's important to own your own audience why you can't rely on social media platforms that might just kick you off tomorrow it's, it's been happening to quite a few people recently um why you know kind of the the small revenue share cuts that you get from the mainstream streaming platforms and things like that isn't necessarily enough for the majority of creators to actually earn a living um why you should be building your own email list why people should actually ha you know have a great website and all these things is now where everybody's heading and we're here with basically a, a solution that addresses all those things and solves those things for people in a way that's really simple, doesn't require any technical knowledge, is pretty much affordable to anyone who's serious about their content and their business. And, um, and yeah, we're partnering with really amazing other businesses who, who are really, you know, killing it in the space and doing amazing stuff. And Chris, I love what you're doing. And um, yeah, it's such it's so cool to, to be able to talk about this stuff with you. Awesome. Well, that's Juliana Mayer. She's the mayor of democratizing <laughs> app development for the everyday human being like you uh, watching or listening out there. The website is superpass.com. If you haven't thought about creating an app for yourself or your client, this is definitely the easy button. And I can't believe how affordable it is to get into. <laughs> Juliana, thanks for coming on the show. Any final words for the people and how can they best connect with you? So I, I guess it's worth mentioning that it's super with an A. So it's S-U-P-A. 
p a w s dot com. Um, I guess if anyone is interested in what we've talked about today, we love we love chatting with people, hearing about your goals and your challenges. So, you know, just send us a message through the website, and we'd be happy to to, to jump on a call with you and talk about you know how we could help you get to that next level or even just sort of recommend some other things that you could be doing. So I guess that, that, that would be my parting message is we love to help people. So um, get in touch. All right. And Michael just said in the chat, the pricing is incredible. So go check it out. Head to superpass.com. <laughs> Juliana, thanks for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks so much, Chris. And that's a wrap for this episode of LMS cast. Did you enjoy that episode? Tell your friends and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And I've got a gift for you over at lifterlms.com forward slash gift. Go to lifterlms.com forward slash gift. Keep learning, keep taking action, and I'll see you in the next episode.